You see what I'm saying? In, in Nigeria, the high top fade, South Africa, high top fade. But they still follow your trend. You understand where I'm coming from here? So, so, so the movie, so the movie is the advocate. In the movie, they're going to show up. Uh, uh, they're going to show you that the Egyptians was a black person. Also, they're also going to show that the white man, if 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 a, if a, if a hog kills somebody, a hog, they put the hog on trial. That's how dumb these people were. They put the mule on trial. So the whole shit was. They, they, they had this gypsy girl, she, she had a hog, and they was trying to um, kill her hog because the hog ran over some child or whatever type thing. And she was telling the advocate had to come in, and he was the person that was sent out by the government to come in and stop all the crazy shit. But it's called the advocate. Very key, we're going to go through some movies tonight, and that's very key. Because your tarot cards, tarot cards, they come from the gypsies, which the gypsies was nothing but the bastardized leftover children of the Moors. You see, your playing cards came from the gypsies. You see what I'm saying? And all that's what that is. And gypsy, and gypsy is, a, is, a, is a slang word for Egyptian. Egyptian. Gypsy. You see what I'm saying? Very key. Um, very key that you get that particular part. Very interesting. Look at this. I told you a long time ago that this is beyond the year 2000. Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and all the crackers came on Nightline on the first of the year, and they were laughing. And every cracker, because since you all deal with what the cracker do, I can come with a nigga from damn Mullins, South Carolina. See, I mean, I'm from Mullins, South Carolina. You go down that Mullins, the National Anthem. I go down to Mullins, the National Anthem, that song, Bo you, uh, it's electric, boogie, yoogie, yoogie. They can play all the damn, the fast shit and all the new stuff, but some night they got to play that, it's electric, and they got to do that line dance and shit <laughs> and stuff. But my point is, and you, I can tell you anything, you ain't gonna believe me. The cracker came on TV and said, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, all the big crackers, they say, well, we do know that the older calendars are, 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 ahead, of, are ahead of the Gregorian calendar, which is the one we own. But they said, all of them agree, but we do know based on the Gregorian calendar that the year 1997 based on that calendar is the year 2000. You see what I'm saying? Now they did say that the old other calendars are even old, that the time is even beyond that. Which I told you 1994 was the year 2000. But they were saying even the late messed up calendar based on the days it was taken out of that, this is the year 2000. Very key that you understand that at this particular time. This is the year 2000. Now, this is what leads me to this. Get this particular information. These are some very Great times, and you just start rejoicing more than anything. You need to rejoice because every day it gets... <laughs> now, one reason why you need to rejoice because every day, yep. not unless you're dead, it gets worse and worse. Mm. With niggas out in the damn street, yeah. niggas on TV, yeah. the goddamn cracker, yeah. and just everyday life should be, you should be tired of this shit by now. And I guarantee you, it's... It's worse now than it was in December. Right. It's worse then than it was last summer. It gets, it gets worse every day. In the mere fact that you even going through this particular part let you know that it's getting closer and closer. Right. You understand what I'm saying? That's because you're growing tired of it spiritually. Right. Now, and, and my band witness, does it get worse every day? Right. Not unless you're a dead nigga. It should be worse every day. You know, we got a bunch of happy people out here, but that's the, that's the dead people. But people that's come that's been in the consciousness, it's, it, should be, it should be agonizing. That's right, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It should be agonizing. That's right. It should be to the point where as the time, where as you ever get to the point that you don't even want to even be with, fuck around with people? That's right. You ever get to the point that the damn phone ring and you don't even want to, yes. you say, wait a minute. And, and in the spirit, last week some, my, my brother gave me, uh, ordered me a caller ID. Not for the conscious people, but for the niggas. You know what I'm talking about. Let's not be funny with the mess. But I'm talking about, and, I, and, and, we're not, and we're not looking down on people. We're not, this is not looking down on people like we're an elite group. We're talking about solitude is a joyous one. There's a book you need to get, a book called Fire and Ice. Fire and Ice. Um, a little green book called Fire and Ice. It's talking about this Germanic secret society from Germany. And in there they go through the doctrine. And at one point in the doctrine they talk, there's a chapter called Solitude is a Joyous One, or Solitude. Which means a certain time when you, when you, when you grow in spirituality, you've got to cut yourself off from society. Not from, not from the people in the street, 
Not from necessarily the bourgeoisie, but all of them Negroes. And all the white people. You can get, be alone in solitude and try to find you a partner that's going to somehow be in on it. If not all the time, but sometimes. Just so that he don't fuck with you when you just, you know what I'm saying? Even in your house, you got a fool beside you. It's best to be alone. It's best to be alone than to be a damn lunatic, and it's becoming more, and it's not, and, 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 and see, this is the thing, too, this is, and, it's, and it has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with the male or female thing, it's, it's just as bad as you can't find a female if you're a male. Just gonna be down, it's best not to be around them. They say, well, there ain't enough males out, and there ain't enough nobody out here. You see what I'm saying? Ain't enough, you see what I'm saying? So, yes, the males, the females verbalize it more, you see what I'm saying? The niggas are fucked, but it's, it's, it's not enough anybody if you if you seriously conscious. You understand where I'm coming from here? Does it get to that point that you don't even want to even be around people? You see what I'm saying? Whereas you start enjoying being by your damn self. You see what I'm saying? Check. Very key. Now, let's go to some things. On January the 23rd, 1997, the white boy came on TV, and on January 23rd, 1997, when he came on TV, they talked about something called the Gaia Mind Project. And it says, on January 23rd, 1997, there will be an exceedingly rare opportunity, or archetypical opportunity, I'll explain that in a few minutes, what they mean by archetypical, of a planetary alignment. At the time expressed in the heavens, such a perfect six-pointed star, this, uh, 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 of a certain six-pointed star, this pattern comes at the exact date of three planets, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune, can join together for the first time in almost 200 years since the renaissance of all five other most planets have been harmoniously arrayed. On January 23rd, the cluster of planets will will uh, center in the first degrees of Aquarius and joined by the sun and, and, and the full moon opposite it, opposite, opposite, it all, opposite it all. Now what they mean here is this, based on the Gay of Mind Project and based on this particular person's discovery in 1969, that when we were talking about when was the age of Aquarius, what they agreed with, what scientists agreed with all around the world, that on January 23rd of 1997, the age of Aquarius was ushered in. You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. Now, to let you know that this is authentic, you've got to understand the science. On the 1st of January, when they came in and said that we now agree that this is the year 2000, or at least it's, it, it, it is at least the year 2000, based on our calendar. Then the first thing they'll do, this is how you know that shit is, is right when they're telling the truth. This is how you know the science. This is, this is how you peep the science on that. Whenever they come in and tell you that this is the year 2000, right? Mm -hmm. And immediately they'll come with a doggone expert that will come in and calm shit over. So what happened was on Nightline, they came in and they agreed that this was the year 2000. But immediately they had their scholar, their expert, or their doctor, or whatever this particular person. He'll come in and say, yes, we agree that this is the year 2000 or beyond the year 2000, but we're trying to tell people that in actuality it's nothing to be alarmed with. This day, this, this, is, this year of the year 2000, the millennium, has nothing to do with nothing just like any other day in 1935. Anytime they immediately follow, you understand the science with that? That lets you know the shit is real, otherwise they wouldn't even follow. So on the day of this conjunction that they ushered in the Aquarian age, they, they had the expert from NASA came in and agreed. He said, yes. The expert from NASA came in and agreed and said, yes, this is the Aquarian age. It was ushered in on this day. But this day is no different, or this year, or no other year's beyond is no different than any other year. Whenever they do that, you know it's the right thing. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the science behind this. What makes this so spiritual? So this day was ushered in on January 23rd, 1997, was the Aquarian age. A day later... They had LeVar Burton on uh, this late night. And they talked about the night that Roots aired. Okay, we all understand the Afrocentric thing that Roots was a, 
of somebody plagiarization of somebody's book and it wasn't the greatest portrayal, but still, yet yeah, it was the best thing the white man gave you. Let's not be funny who we're dealing with. We're dealing with the cracker. The cracker going to preempt seven nights. They give you seven nights in a row. They haven't done it. They say it was the first of the actual, uh, what you call the uh, miniseries. They said it had rich man, poor man, but it came out in 1976. Uh, uh, but it was not, um, but it was not the, it didn't go seven consecutive nights. The first one was Woot. Well, any time the cracker stopped his shit for seven nights to give you a summer, even a, 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 a skimpy history of slavery. <laughs> That's some major shit. You got to look at things the way things are. Can't look at things with arrogance. 20 years later saying Roots ain't shit. When Roots came out, Roots not only changed the concept of white people that say, I didn't know, but most Negroes didn't know nothing about slavery. And I remember when Roots came out, my mama went to school and the crackers was coming up to my mama in the schoolhouse and saying, Miss Hemet, we just didn't know. We didn't know. You know, well, you know, they'll go back to their nature later on because they are programmed to forget. Because they don't have melanin, so they're going to forget. That's, right. That's why the cracker forgot that you had a civil rights movement in the 60s with all these laws. He come up 20 years later and said, what the fuck are we giving a nigga affirmative action for? Because he don't have the melanin to remember. That's, right. That's why he got to write down shit all the time. Right. <laughs> but at that particular time, the cracker was like, we didn't know. And black people, I remember when I was in high school. We bust up in the house and say, look, ain't no crackers pissing in this bathroom no more. And the crackers couldn't come to the public bathroom in the high school for like a couple of months until us niggas forgot. You know, we forget based on they trained us to forget. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. But we stayed mad for a couple of months on that roots thing. So it was spiritual in that past. So Le LeVar Burton was in there. LeVar Burton was on TV and he said, where were you on January the 23rd, 1977? That's some spiritual shit. He said on January 23rd, 1977, Roots aired. And here it is 20 years later, based on this conjunction that they knew about coming from 1969, that January 23rd, 19, doggone 97, you would be ushered into the doggone Aquarian age. That's very spiritual. Because for one time, when this year hit, from 1997 to since January, stuff had been coming up mathematically precise. You see what I'm saying? And this is some amazing thing. And when I go into it, very key that you got to understand that all of this is happening around one event that most people won't understand because they don't understand right before their eyes this thing's happening because you're looking for Cesar B. the Mills, some cracker coming down off the sky on a fucking white horse. You know, you're going by the book of Revelation, which the book of Revelation was taken from a from the Persian revelation, and it ain't got nothing to do with nothing physically happening. It's talking about some shit that's going on inside your body. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Now, let's go on. Let's go on. Because we, we're going we're gonna to deal with some, we're going to deal with this particular part. Um, this particular part. How many people saw, how many people saw, uh, uh, Mars attack? Like I said, we're going to deal with that. How many people saw Mars attack? Okay, you, you, up here, it don't matter. You can, if it's out of the theater, you can still get it on video. Get Mars Attack because it's a very spiritual movie where they take the White House and put the red, black, and green flag up and they kill everybody in the movie but the black people, which is Jim Brown was the favorite, and they killed all, and the only crackers that survived was the one that Jim Brown saved. Very key that you see the movie because the Martians were actually black people. That's what they were telling you. Very key that you see the actual movie. And even when Jim Brown went head to head with their ass, they didn't even kill him because they said, you're a brother. You just don't know. <laughs> you see? The only, only Negro they killed in the movie was Paul Winfield, but he was acting as Colin Powell. <laughs> he was the first nigga to die, right. just like Christopher Atticus was the first nigga to die in the Revolutionary War, get his ass shot off with a cracker shit. Uh, that's right. You understand how this goes? Y'all okay. all right? Am I boring you? <laughs> okay. Okay. So go see the movie, um, um, uh, go see the movie uh, Mars Attack. Very key that you understand that particular part at this particular time. Now, let me get into some things. Let me get into some things right here on what the good news is, because we got a long way to go. Let me see first. Let me, let me, give, a, let me, give, a, 
Let me give a, a few more hard copy before we get into the good news. And we, we, you know, saying let's give a little more, a few more hard copy things right now. Uh, uh, the, uh, go and rent the movie, little cartoon movie, The Hobbit. Came out in 1977. The Hobbit. The Hobbit. Yeah, you, when you see the dragon in The Hobbit, that represents this government, and it represents this entity called a dollar bra. Which in actuality, the dragon was very arrogant and thought he couldn't be fought, um, um, couldn't fail, because he he was ruling the whole planet. But he had one little piece in his uh, in his uh, chest that had a patch gone. And the Hobbit, the little little guy Bilbo Baggins, saw that they can penetrate that, and he told the archer to shoot his doggone arrow right into that one little piece that was cracked off of that dragon's um um, um heart. And it, it brought down the dragon. Very key that you see the movie. But as soon as the doggone dragon was brought down, all the people in the land at this time is you got to look at, don't look at the colors. Look at it as all black people, all indigenous people. They start fighting over the gold left. One don't want to share shit with the other. That's about like that colonization thing in Africa. And that's just like us too. You see where the war turns in. You see what I'm saying? So see that movie. It's very key that you see the movie. Uh, the Hobbit. Very key that you see that. Go, go, go rent the movie if you can. Relic. Relic. Because in this movie, this thing survived in eating, in eating pineal or pituitary gland, the hypothalamus region of the brain, which houses the pineal and pituitary gland. See the movie. Relic. Now, we now understand what happened in Rwanda. Rwanda, what happened? Well, how many people died in Rwanda in 1994? No, it was more than that. Huh? It was like 100,000. About 100,000 or more. And, and any time they say 100,000, it's 10 times that much. They're going to give you always the lowest estimate. What happened was is this. They went in, and first of all, they started the war there. And they kill off 100,000 people. We now know they kill off the 100,000 people. To you, to, to, and what happened was that after they killed them off, they took their bodies, the white man took their bodies, and like I told you in the last couple of segments, they crushed them up and made melatonin pills out of them. Rwanda. They made the melatonin pills out of the bodies. As if the 12 million black people is missing now from the projects, especially in Atlanta. They done wiped Atlanta out. Ain't no underclass down there. The motherfuckers dead. It's for the melatonin pills. They got enough melatonin pills stacked up now to stacked up now to uh, to the last them a thousand years. Even I was taking the melatonin. I didn't, you know, what I was thinking this shit was they, they was talking about this natural melatonin. You know, all that. Come to find out that they were saying that they can make this stuff like putting the, con the chemicals of melatonin together based on the vitamins, they call that melatonin. No, what they're saying now that they couldn't even do that, they had to go in and crush up these bodies. And they, all the ones in Rwanda, they crushed them up, up and they, they crushed them up, and they got what is called melanin camps, and they, they, and they crushed them up, and they packed those, those bodies together, and they, and they condense the, the material, and they ship it over to Europe and America, and they make the melatonin from the pharmaceutical companies. Now, the key is... They made a movie documenting the shit called Ace Ventura When Nature Calls. Right. You thought it was some funny shit. Right. Motherfucking Jim Carrey running around the motherfucker. Right. In the movie, Jim Carrey tapped into an elaborate scheme against the Watusi. They just changed up the name a little bit. And another tribe killing each other off because a sacred bat was stolen. But come to find out it was a doggone white boy. That was that was that had stolen the bat and he was stealing this particular stuff. He had tapped into an elaborate scream of some stuff called guano, which is called bat shit, that was supposed to act as a fertilizer. If you study the, if you understand the esoteric symbol of the bat, it's a Vodun symbol for melanin or the shadow. If you understand that the melanin that they talk about also in Egypt is called a divine fertilizer, then you will understand that the movie was documenting. The Rwanda massacre for melatonin pills in the movie. But you can't see it if you just look at shit literal. Right. You got to put on the x-ray vision now. Okay. Everything ain't what it appears to be. You understand what I'm saying? So the movie Ace Ventura and Nature Calls documented the Rwanda massacre for the melatonin program. 
And what's going on? And we ain't talking about the 12 million hitters died. And we talking about most, I mean, we talking about the shutdown. They done shut down half the projects in Atlanta and the people gone. My sister just got a brand new job at the Atlanta Journal and Constitution. The cracker came up to her and said, oh yeah, um, some cracker came on the job. She had to train the cracker or whatever. Show him the ropes and he came up and said, yeah, um, um, this summer they, they closed down some projects and they shipped them, shipped them black people to Chattanooga. They ain't shipped them. Right, they shipped them to Chattanooga, but they didn't let them out in Chattanooga. But the niggas in Chattanooga, Tennessee, won't your niggas from Atlanta. They shipped them to Chattanooga to a, to a first uh, a holding tank to ship them to the melatonin processing plants. You see what I'm saying? But yet they pumping that damn Holocaust every day on TV. They sh pumping that Holocaust. Schindler List come out. And here's Schindler List now. First of all, the first time in the history of Met network TV they're going to show Schindler's List with no commercial interruptions on Sunday. They just had a Holocaust shit in Time magazine this past week. Every time you look, they still talk about some damn Jews getting killed in Germany. But yet they killing niggas right now today. 12 million dead in the United States alone since 1990. That ain't including AIDS, that ain't including crack, that ain't including gang warfare. We talking about on the Melatonin Project, period. And then they come and make a, another movie called Extreme Measures that came out late this summer that told the niggas what they was doing. And the nigga who wrote the shit called Michael, what's that guy's name? They wrote the, Lawrence? no, the guy that wrote the, Michael Palmer. Michael Palmer is a damn medical doctor who worked on the goddamn shit. This, this cracker was one of the doctors that worked on the Melatonin Project. He, he wrote the book Extreme Measures and he got four of the books out and each one of his books explained all the messed up stuff that the doctors is doing. This cracker is one of the doctors. He wrote it and they made it into a movie starring Gene Hackman and Hugh Grant. Yeah. Check. You yeah. better recognize. You better recognize. I'm telling you. So this is the stuff that's actually going on at this particular time. Now, you know, also, let's see. Uh, now, go, go, see, there's a lot of things you need to do. Go rent this movie every time we say goodbye with Tom Hanks. 1996, 1986. In the movie... It's not a it's, movie ain't got nothing to do with really science, but it shows how Tom Hanks is in the in the in the World War II. He's he's working for Brit. He's uh, he's he's in the British um, um, Navy or Army or whatever. He goes over to Israel and he hooks up with this Jewish girl, but the family don't want him to be with them because they got a close mission in their community. They don't even want no outsiders, so they go to the extreme measures of locking her ass in the room so this before this nigga can go. So what I'm trying to say is, is you don't necessarily have to knock a knock a nigga in the room, but what I'm trying to say is, is we need to get serious. Right. about our own culture enough to take extreme measures to preserve that shit. Right. You see what I'm saying? If you can see this movie and see the extremity on what the fake Jew go through to discriminate against a white boy. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Check. Yeah. You see the movie? See the movie. Look. Now, I want to show you this particular information. Show you this particular information. No, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to get into this, and then I'm going to get into some other stuff that's very good news, but you've got to understand this, because I'm going to break this thing down scientifically so you can understand this very key. Now, when do you want to take the break? I'm just saying. Um, uh, no, we're going to go for a while since, you know, we, we did a late thing, and then we'll pump something. We're going to wait to, you know. Yeah. Okay, cool. We're going to do our hour and 15 minutes, and then we can worry about that now. Okay. Like I said, I can go seven and eight, like the sister from Eliola Coon is up in here. I did, what, seven and a half at your place. And all that was a smoker. I'm telling you, I was seeing you back there and all, you know. So now, yeah. So now, listen, let's, let's deal with this. This particular part here is, is, is dealing with some stuff that I told you of before I talked about the clones, which I also, yeah, in, in the book, The Alchemist, those people that just came need to get the book before I leave, it also talks about the clones. But in here... This is talking about, this, this is talking about the, uh, this is talking about the, um, the original part of cloning and it's bearing witness to what I said also too about the clones being made in World War II. Uh -huh. Now in here, this is some stuff coming from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that was written somewhere in the 60s or whatever. And this is what it says. Who and what is specially prepared, who and what has specially prepared a woman that the wise white scientists intend to bring into the black nation and, uh, um, 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 
to the black nation or bring the damn black nation down with. Now, at first they said that they created this particular woman. This ain't got nothing to do with black women per se. And when they go into this, they're going to show you what this woman is. And from this, this is what you have now. But this is from the 1960s. The messenger teaches that some wise scientists in Germany, and I said, oh, you dead to right when you said this shit here. I said, because why is it the damn Matrix books going to come out with the same shit 30 years later? Some wise scientists in Germany who developed a biological plan in turn will help to destroy the black man. At that particular time, it was going after the black man. And this will have nothing to do with you black women. You out of this. This is another program that's going to start a black man at this particular time, but it ain't got nothing to do with you. You understand what I'm saying? I want to get this straight. The scientific plan is called, is constructed along with the lines of biological manipulation and so-called hybrid beings. Now, I go back, there was an X-Files that came on last year, and it talked about how World War II, Germany, World War II, Hitler made some what is called alien, hy um, human hybrids. Hybrid just means false or, you know, or some, a genetic mutation of something else. Now, these hybrid beings, which in, in this case is totally new type of woman, but one who could, who, could, who could and does have the appearances and the similarities to the black woman. This created woman has some color and body structure of the black, that the black woman has. The messenger teaches that this particular woman, in order for her to direct her, to, 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 in order for one to detect her, excuse me, one would have to be able to observe the coloring of the roots of the hair. And with, now at this particular time, we're talking about both male and female at, in the 90s. This is the, with the incubation period of this thing. This is about 30, 30 year old thing, or maybe close to 30, 35, 36 year old thing here. Uh, the color, and it says the roots, the, col the, the coloring in the roots of the hair will appear to be a greenish color at the roots. This color is due to the chemical makeup of her body. This color may even, some, um, may even in some of this color appear within the eyes. Some other biological ma maladjustments include the irregu irregularity of the menstrual cycle and the obsessing craving for sexual act. Now, remember now, in, after the 1960s, although you did have prostitution well into the damn 40s and the 30s and the 20s, but remember in the 1970s, that's when you start getting the role of the pimps and the, and the mass prostitution. Remember that shit in the 70s? That's, right. that's because of... No, no, we saying, you know, what I'm trying to say is they have, all, they have been here longer than that, but what we're talking about here is you, where you have an influx of phenomena. In the 70s, it went buck wild. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand about the 80s, but even, but I'm saying it started in the 70s, although the 80s, but I'm a, it, this is what it is saying here. It is taught that once, that once one has engaged in the sex act with her, and after a period of six months, his body will develop a malignant type of cancer, thereby, thereby the different corpuscles or blood system will have already um, be, been contaminated. Now, what, what, and what I found out recently since I read this in Philly is this way. Hold on, let me tell you one minute. This, promo this pr promotes even more destruction of the body system as, uh, as syphilis and the degree that appears uh, also in the eyes. Now, what it's saying here, he is actually given a document on the first time, uh, on the first beginning stages of AIDS over 30 years ago, over 35 years ago. So what I'm saying is now, and I can explain this thing. Now, this is what I see. After six months, the body, or the soap, and see, especially at the first part, they got treatment now that they can keep a motherfucker alive so they can get money off his ass. But if you don't go undetected, they can, you can be dead in six months. Yeah. Hell, with easy e that shit was like a damn week. Oh, no. <laughs> That's right. You better recognize. <laughs> After six months, the body has become unable to function and maintain a, 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 a maintain for the maintenance of, for, for constituting life. And all body cells will cease according, will uh, uh, cease to, uh, to accord themselves and thereby produce death. Now, this is what it says. This is the point what I want to get into right now. 
This is the key. The creation of this woman in the experiments has taken place since 1959 within the remote villages of the country of Angola. They started it in the, in the 40s with Hitler. And from the information from Hitler, they restarted it in 1959 in the remote country of Angola. And the project financed by the government of the United States, Germany, Portugal, and major finance as a major finance benefactor. The development and the creation of these women consists of the transmutation of grafting black pigments from the body of a black woman into the body of a white woman. The capillary systems thereby over a period of time alters the entire color of the white body and this type of treatment all along with the high specialized biological perceptions with the range of the minor surgery. And basically what it's talking about here is, is this particular thing here is they, with us, they, they clone white people. But with us, what they did is, is they actually made a white person black and set them out into the street as prostitutes. And now, this shit is male and female, so some of them motherfuckers you see on TV and on the newsroom and all these people representing you can very well be white people. That's right. Hmm? That's right. Very key. Okay. And this particular information... This particular information was given by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in somewhere, somewhere 35 years ago. It also documents age and also is talking about this particular cloning. But now we're talking about another thing. We're talking about them having the ability to make a black white person, black on the outside, by giving them hormone shots. Now we know this can be done because even the guy who wrote the book, The Mucilous Diet, that white boy said, even by changing his diet, his skin started darkening and started getting the most surface melanin he could get in the book, The Mucilous Diet. So you know if this cracker can write this book, what, late 1800s? Or the early 1900s and can bear with it. And they killed this cracker, took him out. What you think about what the cracker can do with the technology was brought down by the Pleiadians and the whole nine yards with this whole Hitler thing. Very few that you understand that at this particular time. Okay. Let's deal with some things right here. What I want to deal with is this. I want to deal with this good news. But you've got to open your mind up and you've got to listen to the concept and the science that I'm dealing with on this. Good thing we got a blackboard here. Good. You got some chalk? Yo, brother. Any of y'all got some chalk? Give me some chalk. While I start doing this and all. Now, uh, let me go into this. Let's see. Let me get my notes. Huh? You say you need chalk? Mm-hmm. Huh? The camera is cut off his head. It was who? Cut off his head. Oh, oh, we need all your heads now, yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Okay, this, yeah, I'm going to set, I'm not moving, so, I'm not really moving, so it's cool. You don't have to be there manning it. Just as long as you, yeah, you know, somebody be the, be the, be the, be the, what you call, okay, ready. Now, what we want to get into at this particular time is this. Uh, the sisters are going to bring the, ter- the chalk, but I want to get into this and try to understand something here. Number one, the O.J. Simpson thing was something greater than what you thought it was. Now, let me explain this to you. When, the, when Napoleon went into Egypt in eight. 1997, no, excuse me, 1797, he went into Egypt. That's 200 years ago, this year. And from that, they carted out all the information. Then you would have people come and have an actual intelligentsia that will deal with this particular information over the course of 100 years. Somewhere in the 1940s, they concluded, y'all listen to me because I want to break this thing down to you. They concluded somewhere in the 1940s that there was a certain incident was going to occur. Now, the problem on the reason why it passed the white man and he don't understand what the fuck is happening and it play, he's being played like a sucker on this. When he look up, he's going to say, I was so stupid. 
But it didn't matter anyway, but it still would be go to go out this way. What happened was, is this. One thing about the white man, if you go see the movie Indiana Jones, the first one, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know after the end they got the ark, they got the ark, what the first thing they did, they pushed the ark into, at the end of the movie they pushed the ark into this big hangar, and they had these boxes stacked up, literally thousands of them. Well, a white man in his colonization of history and colonization of information and knowledge, they got so much of this shit piled up until now, if you pile them information up and you go back in the room, you be done then outdone yourself. You won't know where to start. So they got so much information until they don't know where to start. Because they done stole so much and compiled it. You understand? By keeping it from us, they have locked themselves out of the process. So even what did they have done studies on and had concluded some stuff that they could have been ready for because they got so much of it, they don't understand what the hell is going on. Okay. But I'm telling you, listen, you got to believe me when I say this. First of all, listen, have I ever not come to you with a whole bunch of damn books and stuff? I always try to at least give you some scholarship to say you can read for yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Not saying that the scholarship is the end all and be all. But I at least try to give you something other than the people just coming up and telling you some shit and saying, that's just the way it is. You're going to have to believe me because I'm the Messiah. And they got about like eight, eight Messiahs out here now. <laughs> Imam Esau, which is, you know, Rabboni, he's so, so called supposed to be the Messiah. They got a brother named Solomon that's supposed to be the Messiah. As far as most people in the nation of Islam are concerned, Farrakhan is the Messiah. You got um, the guy Ben Amin that's got this, this Hebrew nation. He got it, and he, it, from Chicago, he also got one in Atlanta. They got the sole vegetarian restaurant. Dude. He took all these people to Israel, and the government gave him $40 million the other month. He's the Messiah. They look at Rahu Nefer as the Messiah. Most of the people, you see what I'm saying? You see, he might not say it, but in so many of them, well, he know the motherfuckers worship him. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? And just about everybody that's heading the organizations at this particular time, people look at them as the Messiah. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? But it, to be true for you, I ain't never told you but one thing. Ye are gods. That's right. And what you need to do is to try to take more stock in yourself and get out of these goddamn organizations because you got the fucking key. You see what I'm saying? You got the key. So you can't never say that I'm trying to lead you astray to the simple fact because I give you information and I don't come around telling you to join no shit and sign up for no shit. So you can't, so I'm trying to be on up and up to let you know, well, if there's any credence you need to give and stuff, is to say, well, just, well, just, just validate that. Just, just look at that particular pattern. I'm not coming up trying to give you no stuff and all, and I always try to document things for you. So when I'm telling you this, this particular part, even though you might think that that nigga reading into this stuff, this is very serious as far as this, the science on this. Now, let's deal with this particular stuff at this particular time. And I'm going to try to explain this thing to you. Uh, first of all, there's at least four or five movies that you get the movies, you can see that they took this thing and they planned it up and they put it in each movie. Uh, in the movie The Jura, uh -huh. you will see the, the part about Reasonable Doubt. Came out in 96. In the movie Trial by Jury, movie called Trial by Jury, came out in 1994, the same damn year. They'll talk about the Reasonable Doubt. In the movie The Shawshank Redemption, they came out the same year that Nicole died. They'll show you that the guy that went to prison, as they wanted OJ to do, but it fucked them up. Because Johnny Cochran did a ritual up, up in that shit. And it <laughs> fucked their ass up. Yeah, that's why you see they made sure they didn't put another nigga up there. It messed up the game plan. But the movie Shawshank Redemption, this guy goes to jail because somebody kills his wife and her lover and they blame him for it. That's right. See? Very key. Um, uh, very key that you understand that. The other movie, The Chase. That's the O.J. Simpson chase scene. And he said, I had a cut on my finger. In the movie, he said he got caught. He went to jail for something he didn't do, but they, they took the DNA from the cut on his finger in the movie. But they got the L.A. chase scene going on. The movie, The Chase, with, uh, what's his name, Charlie Sheen. And who does Charlie Sheen end up being best friends with and was supposed to be the best man at the wedding? Cato Kaler. See what I'm saying? The movie was released about a month right before the killing. So it couldn't have been copied, you see what I'm saying, right before the killing. There was another movie that was released a year before the killing in 1993 
called guilty of sin. And in that particular movie, you will see the shoes, the so-called shoes, right. in the damn movie. That's right. Then they re re released another movie that was in production that was already made before she got killed, that came out after she got killed, called Just Cause. In that movie, you will see the goddamn knife. That's right. yeah. So in Just Cause, you see the knife. In the movie, Guilty as Sin with Don Johnson and Rebecca De Mornay, you will see the shoes. In the movie, the chase scene, you will see the cut on the hand, as well as the L.A. chase scene. See what I'm saying? All this stuff set up this particular way. The domestic violence part was released in a movie to get the people sensitive that black people can have the domestic violence one year before the, the murder. What's, what's love got to do with it? You understand why they make movies. You see what I'm saying? That's all programming. To celebrate the one year of a black author's portrayal of a pathological black man and the dysfunctional black family, which was color purple in 1985, the celebration of the 10-year anniversary, they give you Waiting to Exhale, which is the same goddamn movie, with another black author in 1995. Understand this yet? Check. Very key. Nothing no fall together just randomly. Everything is everything. That's the reason why we can't get nowhere. You understand what I'm saying? Because we're looking for the white man to validate everything for us. And everything can be documented because if everything could be damn documented, you understand what I'm saying? There wouldn't be nothing to crack a note. You understand what I'm saying? But there are certain things which are spiritual, and we are spiritual people. Your grandmama used to just say, it's just so. It just happened that way. And that used to be the law before your ass got educated. Now she's stupid. And now that's the, a the average African's problem. They don't want to hear shit that the traditional people say over there because they're educated now. Well, that's some crazy shit. And that's the ongoing thing of our life, how they always separate us. Because he say, I am what is valid, and I got the doggone power to say something and make it stick and had a whole world believing it in his way. Check? Check. All right. Listen. I'm going to show you this. They're talking here about a judgment trial. Now, the, the, the book you're going to get is you're going to get, just get Burgess' book, Osiris Resurrection, Volume 1 and 2. You get that, but get, look at Volume 1, the green book. There's a whole chapter on the judgment trial. On the judgment trial. What they have concluded based on the, the, the the teachings and the studying from the Egyptologists around the world, which don't really know nothing, but the Egyptologists will put out stuff, but it's the occult scientists, the secret societies, who got the information that was left behind with the Moors that can look at things other than the physical, historical things and look at the metaphysical things. Those particular crackers, this, they discovered this one thing, and I'm going to read this, this one little sentence just so you can understand something. As a region of technical fiction, a uh, 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 fiction from the spirit world back to our good earth, this is a miscalculated domain of the hall of judgment of a mentor. Basically, this is what he is saying here. Listen, this is what he is saying. He's saying, I want to get this right. The first broad consideration led to the mind of truth about the judgment was a reflection that if a mentor, which is the amenta, which is the hidden land or the other realm, was on earth, was this earth, then the judgment trial must necessarily take place in this life. Now let me go and just break this thing down. Because I find I'm because I want to break this down and explain it in my way. What they, were, what they had concluded, that the judgment in the book of Matthew, in the book of Matthew, in the book of Revelation, and throughout the Bible, which was taken from the halls of Mayat, or the, two, uh, or the hall of Mayat, or the judgment, or the book of coming forth by day, which is the book of the dead, which is the book of coming forth by day, which is the hall of Mayat. They found out this conclusion, based on studying that if the judgment would determine who's going into the hereafter of the other dimension, 
if this is the indication or to determine who is going into the other dimension, the judgment, then why would it take place in heaven, which is in the other dimension, if you're going to have something that's going to determine you going to the other dimension? In other words, the judgment has to come on earth in our time. And based on the conclusion from 1940, based on the secret societies, and they forgot this information because they suppress shit. So they don't know what to look for. They said that based on the information coming from the judgment of the halls of Mayotte, or the book of coming forth by day, and from other papyruses, like one called the Contendings of Horace and Seth, they realized one thing, that the judgment that was going to take place, which would judge people based on their nature, they realized that that particular judgment would take place on earth and somewhere going into the millennium. It would be a trial that would be so big that the entire earth would know about it and not knowing the whole time that this particular trial, they were being judged. Now, whether you do your math and do your homework, there is, there's never been a trial as big as the O.J. Simpson trial, and there will never be a trial as big as the O.J. Simpson trial. Now, for you people who have studied some type of Afrocentric thought from 1990, 19, late 1980s up until now, you will understand that most concepts of everything that's coming from the white man, he got from us. Yeah. You will know that Shakespeare, if a Shakespeare did exist, whatever it was, he was taught his shit from the Moors. from the Moors of Spain, or from the Moors who set up 16 universities to teach the damn white man. That's right. Right? That's right. In there, what happened in there is this. He tapped into some ancient fragments going into the future. So it wasn't nothing for a person to see into the future. We could do that. That's what melanin can do to you. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See into the future. And in these particular fragments, what he realized was one thing. He tapped into something of a man that was married to a white woman that would be tried or what happened would, it would end up, some murder would go down. And based on any time they're looking into the future, now he either did it one way, because if you go back and get the movie, you got, we've got to study on all parts to understand this. Y'all all right? Let me explain this thing to you. If you can't understand it, go get the tape after I leave and just study it. You see what I'm saying? But I'm not saying, I'm telling you to be happy about this shit because when I go into it now, I'm just going to the edge of it. This is, some, this is some beautiful shit I'm dealing with here. Because God is my witness. You see what I'm saying? Now y'all just bear with me and hear this damn good news. Now, this is the deal. Somebody give me something to wipe my face with. Some, oh, give, me, give me some of them paper napkins back there. And listen to this. If you go get a movie called Nostradamus, Nostradamus, get the movie by Orion Pictures. There's two of them. There's one called The Man Who Saw Them All. That's one that's documented with Orson Welles. Um, that's not the one. You want to get the one? 1994, Orion Pictures, Nostradamus. That's the one you want to get. In the movie, they show that Nostradamus was taught how to divine, or taught the nature of how to divine, spiritually divine by a more. And he gave them one of the scientists, that even though they're not sure a white man, you understand what I'm saying? That's to throw you off. It was a black man, a more that taught him, in one of them universities in medieval Europe, and in France at that time. Nostradamus case, it was France. Shakespeare, I guess it was England or whatever. Anyway, they showed him how he could see into the future, and they showed him to mix up a portion, and he, li he licked and said, oh, it's nutmeg. And that man said, among other things. But the real thing was nut nutmeg, honey, and cayenne pepper, boil into a tea to open up the spiritual senses. You see what I'm saying? But you 
can't do it every day. Can't do it every day. But in there, remember, in that, if you remember, in the documents, the man who saw the mall, which is the other video, they said that he even recognized the man's name and one of the Antichrist name in the 20th century, and he gave the name Hister, which was Hitler. But when you're looking into the future, a lot of times the names and things can come out vague. You understand what I'm saying? In Shakespeare's case, or whoever was that particular person claiming to be Shakespeare, it could have been a real person, could have been, doesn't matter, whoever wrote the shit. In their case, they're looking into the future because they're taught how to divine by the more science. Because the mystics of Islam, remember I told you esoteric, exoteric. The exoteric, which is the outer, Christianity, Islam, Judaism. The esoteric Christianity is Gnosticism. Uh, uh, Judaism is Kabbalistic, Kabbalah, and Islam is Sufism. All that shit come out of the damn mystery system or uh, 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 ancient Kemet. You understand what I'm saying? And, uh, and those are just later names for the shit. Sufi just means, it's an adjective, it just means woolly-haired one. That's explaining something. The, it, it, it's explaining the word more how he looked. The woolly-haired one, Sufi. The woolly haired Sufi means the woolly-haired one. Soup means wool. Sufi just means that's what they're explaining. So the cracker doesn't cut it off, and they say Sufi Muslim. Now those are the mystics of Islam, but it was the Moors that was the mystics of Islam, and they just the, 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 what was used to describe the Moors, the woolly-haired one, because the Moors go with Lemuria, Moabites. You get that in the Bible. There was Moors in in, in, in Greece. What the fuck the Moors doing? With the Greeks talking about some damn Moors, and the Moors supposed to come in Spain. That I'll let you know that it's way beyond that. Hakeem Bey taught you that. You see. So whoever taught Shakespeare, taught him how to divine, and looking into the future, he didn't get the name Orenthal Simpson right. He got the name Othello. <laughs> Better recognize, because the Othello movie came out one month after the O.J. criminal verdict. That's right, with Larry Fishburne. That's right. And Othello was a black man married to a white woman, and they ended up getting killed or whatever. You got to understand that some of the things don't necessarily have to happen exactly precisely as Shakespeare right, but you got to understand the area of things. See what I'm saying? If that don't, what's that? Uh, they said that he killed him after the white man died, and the white man convinced a fellow to kill his wife based on jealousy. Yeah, something like that. So it's all, it's. In the future, it would appear the way it is now. But looking back, and they're looking in, some things come out vague, but they translate the best way they can. Right. Understand? That's, a, that's some heavy shit. Yeah. <laughs> but check out the math on it. The movie came out in November of 1995. One year after October 3rd verdict, which is 10-13, October 3rd, 10-13, 13, unlucky number for the clock I asked. You see what I'm saying? Othello came out. Now, follow me on this, because it gets even fuckier than that. It gets even fuckier than that. Let's deal with some things here. To show you this particular science on this, I'm telling you, listen. I'm telling you that what you thought was some bullshit is big. It's big. Now, when I go deeper into the Egyptian history, I'm going to show you how big it is. But I got to treat this with some care, because you've got to understand this particular part. Now, let's deal with this. First of all, what happened was this. Based on the heretical papyrus of the British Museum, which is a fragment of a great trial that's supposed to be held into the future, the great judgment trial. The great judgment trial. If you go read the Book of Common Forth by Day, they talk about the judgment hall. It's called the, ju it's called the hall of two truths. One person version of the truth. Another person version of the truth. You had two trials. Actually, I had four trials, preliminary, custody, criminal, and the civil suit. But two main trials. You see what I'm saying? Two main trials, which you had two truths. You had black people truth, as you saw it, and you got white people truth, as you saw it. I'm telling you, this shit is precise. When I start tapping into this, and I'm telling you, I study, but I'm telling you, the stuff was so, the stuff was coming so beautifully and so it was so laid out. Now, I'm going to give you the bibliography on it. You might be able to tap into it, but it depends on how much you can 
go into things other than just reading what you see. That's why, you know, reading the, the, the educational process of the left brain is so fucked up anyway. So let your spirit tell you. Because that's how I get through all this shit. I don't get through this shit by reading no damn books and coming and talking to you. I get this stuff because the spirit tell me what I'm reading. That's how I do it. Okay. Now, let's go on. In the heretical parts of the British Museum or in the Chester Beatty Papyrus, they talk about the judgment trial. And in the judgment trial, you, you, you sister didn't find the chalk, did you? No, no. No, they ain't got none. Mm. Don't matter. I, I, I talk it out. In the judgment trial, I can draw hell. Get, let me get a pencil. In the judgment trial, <laughs> well, while you getting that, I'll be doing this or whatever. Mm. In the judgment trial, this is what you had. When the Egyptologists studied the judgment trial in information that came out in 1967 in books that they didn't present to the public, that they didn't present to the public, in this particular book now, I knew I was missing something, but hold on one minute. I got it right here. Do you know that, do you, do you have any idea that the doggone white man didn't realize that the Egyptians wrote some stuff which you wrote some stuff. You were the people that lived back then. Mm -hmm. That's right. All the people you read about ain't nothing but your ass. And mainly you in the United States incarnated in here because you're the one that's privy to the knowledge. That's, right. that's why you incarnated in here. Yeah. That's why, and also too, it's special because you got to realize this particular part too. You was the one that lost everything totally. That's right. They say in order to pull the universal laws off to break down the old universe, they had to create a new person inside and out. You are a new creature. Newer than anything in the universe. You are even newer than the people that's left on the continent of Africa and even in the Caribbean because they were able to keep some remnants of their culture. If you even look at the Caribbean, they still have some glimpses of Africa. That's right. Even in the colors and everything. You see what I'm saying? That's right. And if you go to Africa, they still got, even though they're colonized, they still understand some glimpses of that. Plus also those other places like the Caribbean and all those particular things, they don't see the same concept of the white man as you do because it's all black. That's all they see is black people. So they don't have the same contrast of you being in a world where it's majority white. You understand what I'm saying? There is a fundamental difference in, in the actual, your situation. Plus also, you was the person that was turning the inside out, so they had to make a new human being. So in order so you couldn't carry any of this dimension with you, but don't worry about that. You are the key and the spark for all black people. So you got to understand this. This is the difference of what I'm saying and what all followers are, uh, uh, are not saying as far as most people here in organizations. I guarantee you, you go to any organization, I don't give a damn who it is. You go to any organization, any fundamentalist religion organization, any Afrocentric conscious organization that's claiming to, to be the one that's going to lead people in there, they'll all tell you that the people that's not, this, that, 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 the, the people that's going to make it is the people that's going to bear witness with their ideology. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. All of them say that. You understand what I'm saying? Now my point is this here, if the spiritual way was coming to clean us up, why the hell I'm going to come back to save a damn one organization of people and then wipe out the rest of the people on the planet? That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. It is also prophesied that you would be sick. Because if, if you wasn't sick and out of your mind, there wouldn't, wouldn't be no need for nobody to come clean up nothing. So how in the hell I'm supposed to be sent spiritually? I'm talking about not me, but I'm talking about the spirit.